Hey everybody, Brad from BH Cosplay. I wanted to show you this project I've been working on and uh, basically the electronics and how I got them to work. This is uh, my kind of a, a test piece for my M41A pulse rifle from the movie Aliens. So this was kind of a test mold that I did. So I'm using it to test out the different components to see how they work. Uh, that way if I break it or screw it up, it's not too big of a deal. So this is a digital display, and I designed this digital display uh, so that when I insert it into the gun, the light comes on. Just like that. So it stays put, that way it's got a cool digital display, and then when you pull it out, it turns off. So I'm going to show you how I went about making this particular piece to work with this M41A pulse rifle. Okay, so what I did was I used my breadboard that I got with my Arduino uh, that I have not used at all until this moment uh, because uh, honestly, I'm a little scared of the Arduino uh, and I haven't done a lot of programming. That'll be my next challenge. So for this, what I'm basically doing uh, is uh, using this breadboard to try to figure out the circuit that I need to use to make my digital display show the number 99. I've hooked up a real simple power source. I used to have one that was wired, but I used it. So what I did here, super simple. I used a uh, three volt watch battery and I used a black wire to tape to the negative side. I used a red wire to tape to the positive side. And then I put those into my spots on the breadboard so that it's sending power to the breadboard. Um, obviously you want to make sure that you're not overpowering whatever you're using so like if you're using 3 volt uh, um, LED lights you want to make sure you're not hooking like a 9 volt or a 12 volt battery up to this because it'll blow them out so make sure you're matching your voltage to your voltage so uh, these digital displays I just ordered on Amazon and they are not programmed they basically just come with the 10 pin setup you can see that here and what I have to figure out, because it didn't come with any instructions, was which pin needs to get what kind of uh, connection. So basically what I did is, using this breadboard, it allows me to uh, test out different setups to see what happens uh, when I do that. So just to kind of show you as an example, so uh, if you don't know anything about breadboards or if you don't know any of that stuff, uh, there's a ton of awesome tutorial videos out there. Just do a search on breadboards for beginners and you'll see, that's what I did, you'll see tons of great stuff that'll help you understand how to set this up. So um, this kit came, like I said, with my Arduino, so it has all these cool uh, wires that help me test things really fast without having to solder things and unsolder them. So that's what the big benefit of the breadboard is. So what I did was, is I set up this system so that I could start testing where each wire needs to go. So what I learned, so instead of going through the trial and error process, what I'll show you is, so I learned that the pins over here that are represented by slots uh, three and four, I found out that those needed to be connected to the negative lead. Okay, and that's what this side is over here. So the red line over here is positive. You see my positive line coming in here, negative coming in here. Uh, I learned that through trial and error that the basically the one and two positions over here needed to go over to the positive. They needed to have a positive charge. Now you'll notice when I plug in the blue, I get some light showing up. So now I have, okay, I found part of my pattern and the pattern I want is a nine nine, okay? So now I put the orange one in and oh, I got another light that's set up. So now I know that the orange and the blue, or basically the one and the two position pin over here, need to be connected to the positive. The three and the four pin need to be connected to negative. And then the five pin needs to be connected to positive. So there we go. So now I have another pattern. Um, also, the other thing that is important is, so you can see that kind of the dots down here, what will, is basically the bottom of this. This has to be specifically aligned the way I did this so uh, that um, 
essentially what I'm calling this so I can remember which side the pins are is I'm calling this side the positive side even though it's not technically the positive side but it's just to help me remember that the bottom is what I lined up towards the positive side to help keep it straight in my mind okay so then I found out that the one let's see so orange over here is the one pin on this side that needs to be positive I found out the blue and the white have no connection at all so they don't plug in at to anything they don't go to positive or negative or neutral uh, the red wire also needs to be connected to positive just like that and then the black wire so this is uh, would be pin four and five need to be connected to positive so as you can see with this all connected up I have gotten myself the display hopefully you can see it through all the wires to show nine nine so now that I know that what I did was I translated that to uh, a piece of paper so oh yeah there you go that's what I write to myself it's only failure if you give up so give yourself little uh, positive mantras because while you're doing stuff like this it can be a nightmare so this is the way I marked it so the dots which is the basically the bottom of the uh, the display for pin one two three four five it's positive nothing nothing positive positive okay and then over here so the top of the display the pins on the top of the display are positive positive negative negative positive okay so now here's the important thing you'll notice I have this crossed out the reason is is because as you can see this display is facing up so I can see the numbers when I'm soldering it this what I'm calling the one pin on my diagram when I flip it it's actually the five pin so I have to remember that because when I'm soldering it I'm not having it facing down like this I'm having the pins face up so that was why I had to cross this off and change it I just reversed it so that when I have the display pointing the direction where the pins are up it's now positive positive nothing nothing positive positive negative negative positive positive so when I have it set up like that it gives me this digital display okay so that's how I figured out how I wanted to get the display to look now you could use an Arduino and you could make this digital display count down and there's program to do that but again because I'm dealing with such a small space I mean this is what I have everything fit in um, I didn't have room for an Arduino plus that would also in, uh, increase the cost if I you know, when I sell these in my Etsy store and I just wanted to make something that was simple that was static for like photographs uh, that would give you a cool digital LED display and help keep the cost down so that's the reason I went with that you could get a lot fancier and have it so that when you touch the trigger the display goes down and all that stuff but I didn't want to do that with this I just wanted a basic digital display that showed the number 99 so this is my pin configuration and the red represents positive the black represents negative so what I did to, to kind of save time is I essentially pinched these two together so they were connected I pinched these two together so they were connected I pinched these two together there so they're connected and I basically just cut these off because I don't need them they they're not necessary to create the digital display that I want once I did that I then basically soldered a bridge wire from here to here so that all three of these are connected I also soldered a bridge wire from here to here. I soldered another bridge wire from here to here and then I had one wire coming off right here that went out to basically the battery. So that's my wire leaving this system. So I only have one wire going out. All the rest of this is, stays pretty contained with the chip. For the black it was super easy. I only had these two wires so essentially 
those are bridged together and I just bring a wire off here so that goes out to my power supply. So here's just a simple diagram showing how I got all of this stuff to connect up in this box right here. Okay, So digital display up here, my battery which is a just a 3 volt watch battery is in a holder which goes right here in the bottom of this. You can see it right there. A nickel strip, which you can buy on Amazon. They're super cheap. Uh, and so these are 0.15 millimeter by six millimeters wide by 50 millimeters long. The reason I went with nickel is one, it's obviously conductive, it's a metal, but two, it's, uh, it will attach to magnets. So if, which is important because I need this magnet to make my connection. So I wanted something that was magnetic and something that I could repeat the size exactly. So these little nickel strips ended up being perfect for what I wanted. And as you can see, you know, I bought them in like a 50 pack and I, I don't even remember how much it was, but it was less than 10 bucks. It was super cheap. As you can see here, there's my magnet. And what I've done is I've soldered a wire to the magnet. Now, one of the things I learned about soldering to magnets is, is that if you're just soldering one small magnet, heat can affect the ability for the magnet to work. So it can take away some of its magnetic properties. So once before you soldered it, it was very strong. When you solder it, it makes it weaker. So the way I got around that and learned it from a video is if you take a stack of larger magnets and then you put your smaller magnet that you want to solder on top of those magnets they will heat up but not as much as this one and what happens is these other magnets the larger magnets help this smaller magnet maintain the its magnetic uh, direction so I have no idea how that works but it does because I did it and it worked perfect so that's how I ended up soldering so you can see I've got three larger magnets and then the smaller magnet on top and that helps it maintain its magnetic attra attraction. So the basic way I set this switch up was, and again, I wanted it to turn on when I slid it into the compartment and turn off when I pull it out. So inside this box, I have the display, I have the wire that I soldered to the magnet is going to connect to my positive connection from the display. The negative connection from the display is going to connect to the negative side of the battery. So now what I have is basically an open circuit. I need to find a way to close that circuit. So here's the entire component. The magnet uh, is in the side, the battery is in the back, and it's all set up. Now you'll notice from the side you can see that the battery sticks out just a bit. Now I did that on purpose because what I uh, learned is the outside edge of this battery is also part of the positive side. So when I take this battery out, so this side is the negative side, this side is the positive side. So and you can see that it actually looks like it's crimped over the top. So they're separated by a, basically what is the equivalent of a washer. Uh, it's basically a non-conductive um, material that separates the positive from the negative side. So the cool thing is this whole side of this battery is positive. So when I put it in my battery holder, this edge is the positive side that's up. So to complete that circuit, all I need to do is connect the magnet which is connected to the positive and then have this piece of nickel make contact with the back of the battery. When those two things happen, it turns on the display. When I pull it out, the display turns off because that piece of metal moves away from the battery. When they connect, light comes on. When they disconnect, light goes off. So this is my connection here. This is how I make that circuit closed. 
So I went through several iterations of this, trying to figure out how I wanted to do it. Uh, the first one I did, I actually soldered wires to each one of the magnets because my plan was to make the uh, circuit closed by going from magnet to magnet. Um, that's where my happy accident found uh, came in, where I had this one touching here, and then as I bent the wire around and slid it in, it touched the positive side of the battery. I'm like, oh, hey, I don't need to use this other magnet because this completes my circuit. So awesome. That's one less thing I have to worry about messing with. So another way you could do this, you could even do this obviously without magnets. And here's kind of a diagram of that. So same kind of thing. You've got the display here. You've got your negative connection to the negative por portion of the battery. You have your positive connection hooked up to either a magnet or another piece of metal that sticks outside of the body. So like this, so this, this magnet, this could just be a piece of metal that's sitting right here. Offset, so they're not touching, is another piece of metal or a magnet. Uh, and then that is connected to the dis positive display. So again, you have an open circuit here. Then if you take a piece of metal and you touch it to those two other pieces of metal, that will complete the circuit and it will turn on the display. So again, you could theoretically do this uh, without, well not theoretically, you can do it without magnets. Uh, the reason I like magnets is because what it does is it pulls that piece of metal directly against it. So for non-metallic connections, you have to make sure that there there's enough force to touch them. But with a magnetic connection, it pulls it directly to it. So you'll notice if I have it here, See how it just pulled it directly to the magnet? So then I don't have to worry about um, making sure that I bend the metal out enough or after wear and tear it going back in and out, it loses its springiness so it stops making contact. It's just that's why I like magnets, um, but soldering magnets can be kind of a pain. So, but you can do it without it. You could essentially take two pieces of this. You could have two pieces like this. You have your positive coming off here, your positive coming off here. And when a third piece of metal comes in and connects the other two, you've got the completed circuit and the light would come on just the same. So you don't, you don't even have to use magnets. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that information uh, helped you out and gave you an idea of how I put together my circuit for my M41A pulse rifle from the movie Aliens. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, make sure you click the like button and subscribe. Thanks.